Hello everyone and welcome to Advanced Higher Biology. Is Mrs Anderson here? I hope you're all safe and doing well. We have been looking at the best way to teach the Advanced Higher Biology course and have decided to use the following structure. Each week we are going to put a narrated PowerPoint presentation along with revision materials onto Teams. We want you to access these as best you can to help you learn the course at home. As well as this, you have revision questions to complete and at the end of the week, we will put up a quiz via the assignment section of Teams for you to complete and then submit. One of the biology teachers will be on hand to answer, answer any questions that you may have via Teams. The advanced higher course consists of three main units, cells and proteins, organisms and evolution, and investigative biology. We will be starting with the cells and proteins unit. The advanced higher course is broken up into two components, so the exam and the advanced higher project. The exam itself is three hours long and is worth 75% of the course, while the project is worth 25% of the course. The project itself will not be started until after the summer holidays, so no need to worry about that quite yet. This week we are going to start at key area 2C, which is amino acids and protein structure. So we have two learning intentions today. The first is to understand that different sequences of amino acids create the primary protein structure. And the second is to understand that R groups in the amino acid structure determine the properties of that amino acid. We have discussed the production of proteins since Nat5 Biology. In advanced higher, we want to know how the polypeptide chain we created at the end of translation becomes a protein that plays a vital role within every living cell. Remember, many of the proteins that we know are essential for life. We're going to look at how proteins such as enzymes and signaling molecules are produced. Let's just quickly recap over how proteins are made. Proteins are made via a two-stage process. Transcription, which occurs in the nucleus and copies the DNA code into mature mRNA. And translation, which takes the mRNA codes and aligns specific amino acids next to them. These amino acids go through the ribosome and are bound together by peptide bonds, forming a polypeptide chain. This is where we start. We want to learn how this polypeptide chain then becomes a protein. After translation, proteins are created in four stages. So the first is primary structure, then secondary, then tertiary, and then finally quaternary structure. Proteins are built up in stages from the polypeptide chain into a 3D structure with additional modifications. As seen in the diagram, proteins start as a sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. This is known as the primary structure, so it's really basic. Using bonding, the primary structure starts to fold into secondary shapes. Further bonding causes a 3D structure to form, now creating the tertiary structure. Quaternary structures are the final stage of creating a protein, where proteins contain more than one amino acid chain. Okay, so let's have a more detailed look into the primary structure itself. The definition for primary structure is the primary structure of a protein is the sequence in which the amino acids are synthesized into a polypeptide. And remember, synthesized just means made into a polypeptide. This diagram shows a sequence of amino acids. In humans, we actually have 20 possible amino acids. These can be put into any sequence with the potential to make thousands of different proteins.
You have heard of the term polypeptide chain before in higher biology. Polypeptides are also known as polymers. Polymers are essentially large molecules consisting of many repeated units. The repeating subunits in proteins are amino acids. Amino acids are known as monomers as they are small singular subunits. This diagram shows a polypeptide chain with many small amino acid monomers. We have looked through learning intention one to understand that different sequences of amino acids create the primary protein structure. We're now going to look at number two to understand that R groups in the amino acid structure determines the properties of that amino acid. Amino acids are the monomers that build up to create proteins. The 20 types of amino acids in humans can be classified into distinct groups based on their chemical composition. All amino acids have the same general chemical composition. They all have a central carbon atom and four groups bonded to it. An amine group, a hydrogen atom, a carboxylic acid group, and a group known as an R group. The R group is the only one that changes. The R group is what makes each amino acid different and classifies an amino acid into its specific group. R groups differ in five specific ways. So they differ in their size, they differ in shape, they can differ in their charge, they can differ in hydrogen bonding capacity and finally they can differ in chemical reactivity. As stated previously, the R group attached to the central carbon atom determines the class that the amino acid is in. There are four amino acid classes. The first is acidic and the R group in the amino acid is a carboxylic group. The second class is basic and the R group in the amino acid is an amine group. Polar amino acids have a hydroxide amino acid R group. And finally, hydrophobic amino acids have a hydrocarbon R group. Let's have a look at these in a wee bit more detail. Acidic amino acids have a carboxylic group in their R group. The R group can have other atoms, but if a carboxylic acid is included, it is an acidic amino acid. Acidic amino acids are negatively charged. An example of this is an amino acid called aspartic acid. When we say acidic groups are negative in charge, this is due to them losing a hydrogen ion when they are in solution. When they lose the hydrogen ion, this makes the carboxyl group have a negative charge. Basic amino acids have an amine group in their R group. The R group can have other atoms, but if an amine group is included, it has a basic amino acid. Basic amino acids are positively charged. An example of this is an amino acid called lysine. When we say basic groups have a positive charge, this is due to the addition of a hydrogen atom when the amino acid is in solution. When the amine group gains the extra hydrogen ion, it becomes positively charged. Polar amino acids are very slightly charged. This allows them to form hydrogen bonds with other molecules such as water. This will be important later in the course when we discuss amino acids that are hydrophilic, which means they are soluble in water. The R group in polar molecules contains a hydroxyl group. An example of a polar amino acid is serine. Hydrophobic amino acids are non-polar and carry no charge. Their R group contains carbon and hydrogen ions. An example of a hydrophobic amino acid is alanine. You may be asked to identify an amino acid class from a diagram. 
sometimes benzene rings are shown. A benzene ring contains only carbon and hydrogen ions, so it is still classed as a hydrophobic amino acid. So even if it looks a wee bit weird, it's still hydrophobic. Okay, so I'm going to give you five seconds. Can you identify which type of amino acid this is? Okay, so well done if you've got this correct. It is an acidic amino acid. Even though there are carbons and hydrogens in the R group, the carboxyl group makes the amino acid acidic. Okay, so that carboxyl group there makes that amino acid acidic. Okay, let's try another one. I'm going to give you another five seconds. Can you identify which type of amino acid this is? Okay, so well done if you got this correct. This is a hydrophobic amino acid. This is because it only contains hydrocarbons. Okay, so there's only carbons and hydrogens in their R group. Okay, I'm going to give you another five seconds. Can you identify which type of amino acid this is? Okay, well done if you got it correct. This is a polar amino acid. Even though there are other carbons and hydrogens, the R group has an OH or a hydroxyl group present. So that means it's polar. Okay. I'm going to give you five seconds. Can you identify which type of amino acid this is? Okay, well done if you got this correct. This is a basic amino acid. The reason for this is even though there are other carbons and hydrogens, the R group has an amine group within it. As you know from higher, peptide bonds join amino acids together to create a polypeptide chain. For advanced higher, you need to know the chemical composition of a peptide bond. An enzyme causes a condensation reaction between two adjacent amino acids and this allows a peptide bond to form. We're going to look a wee bit more at how a condensation reaction occurs. Condensation reactions occur between the OH of the carboxyl group on one amino acid and a hydrogen from the amine group on another amino acid. This creates a water molecule and allows a peptide bond to form. This can be seen in the diagram below. The blue OH of the carboxyl group and the blue H of the amine join together to create the peptide bond in red and the water in blue. This is another diagram showing the condensation reaction that created a peptide bond. You need to be able to identify a peptide bond chemical composition at the advanced higher level. Okay, so this week our learning intentions were as follows. Number one, to understand that different sequences of amino acids create the primary protein structure. And number two, to understand that R groups in the amino acid structure determines the properties of that amino acid. Now that we've went through the PowerPoint, these are the revision tools we are advising you to use. So the summary notes can be found in the file sections of Teams. If you're Look at page 29 and 31. This gives you all the information you need this week about proteins. I've also attached scans of a revision book for you to read. Finally, if you type in study stack and in the search bar type St Ninian's HS, this will come up with loads of flashcards. Click on the advanced higher proteins link to get flashcards for the topic we have just covered. This week we have two assessment materials for you to complete. The first are revision questions for you to download and complete. If you can't do this, write these on a sheet of paper for me. The second is a proteins quiz on Teams. Once you've completed this, you must submit it 
This will show us that you've completed the task. Please let us know if you're having trouble accessing documents on Teams and thank you for listening.